So I recently became interested in the idea of counting cards. I was watching a Jomatek video and he was talking about internships that he did while at university. One of them that stuck out to me was when he interned as a quant at Citadel, the investment company. I didn't know anything about quantitative analysis, but it sounded interesting, so I read a book on it. It's basically using mathematical models to identify good investment opportunities and make lots of money. The people that do this sort of work have PhDs in math, computer science, and physics. One of the early quants was Edward O. Thorpe, a math professor from UC Irvine. Before he started using math to make money on the stock market, Ed cracked a game of blackjack. He's the guy who invented counting cards. Anyway, so I've gone deep into the rabbit hole of counting cards as a weird new hobby. I read Thorpey's earlier book, Beat the Dealer, where he shows us how using counting cards and basic strategy together lets the player beat the dealer. But check this out. Basic strategy is the optimal way to play blackjack without taking into account previously dealt cards. Overall, it seems like card counting is a very doable way that the player can actually make money in casinos. I thought it would be fun to run some simulations to better know what to expect in the casino. I'll link some blackjack and card counting resources in the description box for anyone who's interested. The simplest card counting method is the high-low method, where as the cards are dealt you keep a running tally of the ratio of high to low cards. You add 1 to the tally whenever a 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 is dealt and subtract 1 from the tally when a 10, jack, queen, king or ace is dealt. Do nothing when a 7, 8 or 9 is dealt. When the deck is heavily weighted in high cards, the player has the advantage, and when it's heavily weighted in low cards, the dealer has the advantage. The player makes money by betting large amounts when the count is high, and small amounts when the count is low. In today's video, I want to attempt to make a quick simulation so that we can see what happens to a player's bankroll when they bet at different counts and therefore with different advantages over the casino. By doing this, hopefully we'll be able to get a picture of the overall gain and loss of card counting hand by hand and see if it's profitable. We need to know how often these different counts can be expected to occur. According to this graph, when played with six decks, typically a casino will use six decks, the count is zero around 42% of the time, two and negative two, 8% of the time, four and negative four, 3% of the time, and six or negative six, about 1% of the time. And based on this formula, we can figure out the edge of the player when you follow basic strategy. Edge approximately equals true count minus one divided by two. I'll put this into a table so that it's easier to see. From this table, we can see that the player should not expect to be profitable until the true count is over one. True count is just the running count divided by the number of decks left to be dealt. And running count is the number that you are constantly keeping track of through the game using the high-low method. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense. Now we're going to code up a visualization for what happens to the bankroll at each of these values of true count over time. This simulation uses a bankroll of 5,000 with an average bet size of $10. The return is displayed count of down 6 on the left through to plus 6 on the right. We can see that after 150 hours of play that anything below a count of plus 1 we lose money. And when the count gets low we lose all of our money. But when it's 6 or above we make $6,000. That's around $45 an hour. These numbers will change if we change the bet size. Let's do a bet size of $20 and see what happens. $50. So with an average bet size of 50 bucks, we make so much money on the positive count that it goes off the screen, but we lose money a lot faster on a negative count. This simulation can give us an idea of what to expect if we only play blackjack when the count reaches a certain number, but in reality the count's going to move around. Let's see what happens when the count changes based on these probabilities. 
but we change our bet size according to the count. We'll do $5 when the count is one or below. We can think of this as like the table minimum or something. $10 when the count is two, $15 when the count is three, $20 when the count is four, and $25 when the count is five or higher. We know that we should lose money over the long run when the count is below one, but the goal is that we more than just make up for it by betting larger amounts when the count is in our favor. Let me adjust the code. Well, we can see that if these odds that I found online are right, card counting should make you a profit. It made $975 in 150 hours, or $6.50 an hour. That's not much at all, but the cool thing is that this should scale as we bet larger and larger amounts. Let's play with the bet spread a bit and see if we can increase the profit. $5, $15, $25, $35, $50. That's interesting, because I thought we would make more profit by increasing the bet size when it's favorable to the player. It lost a lot of money. I'm gonna check the first spread again and see if it makes a profit or if it was an anomaly. Interesting, now we lose money on the previous bet spread. Maybe I messed something up when I was adjusting the code? I couldn't find any problems with the code. Off screen I did a simulation with a bet size of $5 when the count is one or below, and $25 when the count is above one, and it made a $1,930 profit. The previous losses might just come down to variance. While I was messing around, I stumbled across a bet spread that generates pretty good returns. It's $5, $25, $50, $100, and then $250. I'm gonna display three players so that we can get more of an idea of the variance involved with card counting. All three players made profits, Player 1 made $5,050, or about $16.80 an hour. Player 2 made $6,580, or about $21.90 an hour. And Player 3 made $1,415, or about $4.70 an hour. Okay, so what did we learn? That card counting might be profitable? It looks like it is. These simulations were run with a $5,000 bankroll. The three players averaged $14.49 an hour. It stands to reason that by doubling the bankroll and the bet size, you could make twice as much with the same level of risk. So with $10,000 capital, you could expect to earn almost $30 an hour. It looks like to make real money counting cards, you need a big bankroll that can support big bets. At least a $35,000 bankroll for $100 an hour. To me, it doesn't really seem worth the time and capital risk, but it's fun to know that there's a casino game where the player can actually expect to win over the long term. He beats me. Straight up. Pay him. Pay that man his money. I should mention that this simulation should be run over a longer time frame to be able to reduce the effects of variance, and that there are certain deviations from basic strategy that take the count into consideration and can increase the player's edge. Check out the description box because I've linked some resources for anyone who's interested in this stuff. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video.